Hi, Alina here. I'm a transvestite, a tea girl, a cross-dresser, transgender, whatever you want to call it. I'm one of them. I'm a man that dresses up as a woman. I live as a man, but here I am, dressed as a woman. I've got makeup on, a wig on, I've got a dress on. And do you know what? I love it. I love doing it. I know men, we're not supposed to do it, but I'm quite happy to cast off my masculinity and embrace my feminine side because I enjoy you know, how it feels and I like wearing these clothes and I absolutely love putting on makeup, especially mascara. You can't beat mascara lashes. Men aren't supposed to do that, but I do. I'm, I'm a transvestite. What do you expect? You know, it's fun as well. It's really fun uh, for me anyway. Um, I am aware I've had uh, occasional threats of violence uh, posted against some of the videos I've put on YouTube. Um, but, you know, you're going to get trolled anyway, aren't you? I don't know why they're watching the video anyway, if they hate transvestism. But there you go. No accounting for taste, is there? You know? Um, so, yeah. So what does it take to be a transvestite, a tea girl, a cross-dresser, whichever label you prefer? Uh, some people hate labels, but they're kind of convenient. I don't mind them too much. I'm quite happy to call myself a transvestite. That's T-R-A-N-S. No, I'm joking. I'm just winding people up because I know they hate the word, but I don't mind it. The reason I don't mind it is when I was younger and I was confused about my desire to dress up as a girl, um, I, was, I was all alone with it. And then I discovered the word transvestite and it basically gave me salvation. Um, so, you know, I've got a bit of a soft spot for it. So that's why I use it. But, you know, I'll, I'll stop saying it now because I know it's not popular in the trans community. Um, yeah, I was saying, what does it take to dress up as a woman? Well, that depends how far you want to go. Quite a lot of men want to dress up as women. Um, some of them won't admit it to themselves. Some of them torture themselves and don't do it, but they really want to do it. Um, or if they do do it, they do it at, like, say, a fancy dress party and they do it really badly on purpose. Uh, not because they think they should, but they just think it'd be more acceptable if they dress up as a woman and they look kind of like a bloke dressed up. What they really want to do, though, is dress up properly. That's what I wanted. And I know I'm not alone in that ambition. Um, so over a period of years, I gradually committed to it. And you have to commit to it physically if you, tend, if you want to go quite far with it. By that, I mean, in my case... Um, it meant kind of like, if you see my eyebrows, I know they're not brilliant, but my natural eyebrow would be a thick slab here, quite solid. So I, ha I do pluck them. Uh, I didn't do it overnight. I did it over a period of about a year, gradually took them back and kind of got away with it. Nobody seemed to realize what was going on. In fact, quite a funny thing happened. People said to me that I was looking well and looking younger. <laughs> And I realised it was just because I was plucking my eyebrows. Uh, so, a bit of a side benefit there. Um, the other thing was, because I personally want to look like a woman, I mean, I know I don't make it, but I'm keen. That's my dream and what I'm constantly working towards. Uh, just putting on a dress and things might be enough for some people. You, we've all got different levels of what satisfies us if you incline to dress up as a woman, which, believe me, a lot of men are, and uh, loads of them should be a bit more open about it, I think, and it wouldn't be such a taboo thing to do. Um, you have to commit to it physically, mentally, and financially. It's it's not easy. It's going to cost you, because you have to buy stuff. Makeup isn't cheap. You have to buy makeup. You have to buy dresses. If you want to wear dresses, you might want to wear something else. You have to buy wigs, you know, I haven't got nail varnish on, but obviously you have to buy that. But then there's a whole raft of learning the skills. Like, how do you put makeup on? You know, um, I didn't know. I mean, I used to just, you know, shove it on and put liner right around my eyes. I realised the whole point of makeup is to accentuate certain features and play others back that you don't want accentuate. Like, for example, you know, I know I'm not pretty and I know I'm not feminine, but... My eyes are probably the best feature on my face, believe it or not. <laughs> but my lips are rubbish. They're dead thin, especially the top lip. And my skin, 
around here is bad because of my beard because I have to shave every day and I'm 60 years old now so my skin's pretty rough and it's getting lines as you can see here you know I'm not a young woman I never was I was always a young man but I wanted to be a young woman um, so I need all the help I can get so makeup is my friend but if you use your makeup wrong you can actually make things look worse uh, there's no escaping I've got these lines and I've got this rough skin and uh, you know I'm not feminine looking although one can dream so I try to use makeup to play up my eyes and play down the lower part of my face which is not great um, so to do that I decided the only way I could really learn how to do it because I was getting nowhere fast I was trying things this was before YouTube was full of videos on how to apply makeup and um, I decided to hire a makeup artist to teach me what I needed to do for my face and um, that was quite expensive and you know I took a hit financially but it was well worth it um, that what I learned in that one day more than reaped its benefits in my years of cross-dressing um, you know it helped make me the woman I am now I'm not really a woman but you know what I mean and I'm still not good at it that's the thing but I you know you, you never kind of quite master it so uh, one has to keep working on it so yeah you need to invest financially in clothes makeup and wigs now that's not going to be easy for most people because everyone's financially challenged especially in the present climate um, so what I did was I had a small saving fund and I put a bit away each month and eventually I had enough in the pot to go out and buy some women's clothes and women's shoes um, and buying the clothes now is a lot easier than it used to be <laughs> when I first started I had to go to a shop to buy my dresses and I kind of overcook it <laughs> By that I mean like I'd buy a dress and I'd get to the counter and instead of just handing it over and paying for it stupidly I don't know what I was thinking because I was in such a panic about being discovered as a cross-dresser or transvestite um, I'd start waffling to the counter assistant you know saying oh yeah it's a present for my wife and all this kind of thing and the, it was it was too much and they knew something was going on I'm sure most of them knew I was buying it for myself but if I'd have just paid for it, they wouldn't have cared. So I learned that. So if you buy clothes in a shop, just pay for them and don't start thinking up a backstory. Same if you buy makeup in a shop. You know, I used to say things, oh, I hope this is the right shade. I've been sent out to buy it. You know, if I was buying blusher or something. So uh, just pay it. They don't care. It's a sale as far as they're concerned. But you can now buy online, which is far more a kind of discreet if you want to keep it secret. And... Obviously, companies like Amazon, say you buy them, or here in the UK, Debenhams, or, or online companies such as, I think it's Shane, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is where I bought this dress. Um, I get them delivered to where I work. so, And they come in discreet packaging, so you're quite safe. Um, and I get my wigs delivered to where I work, because I obviously don't want them arriving at home. And the reason I don't want them arriving at home is... Everybody knows I dress up as a woman at home, the whole family, but they're not that keen on it. So the deal is, I rarely dress up as a woman, but when everyone's away, say visiting relatives, and I'm not, I'm kind of home because I might be working on something, you know, I'm quietly allowed to get on with it, which is exactly what I'm doing tonight. So, uh, you know, there you go, you know, I'm taking an opportunity. So yeah, buy your clothes online if you're really worried. And don't go mad with the prices. Like the company I mentioned, Shane, their clothes are quite inexpensive. By that I mean cheap. <laughs> right. Like this is a cheap dress, but it's a bit of a gem amongst all the things they've got on there. It, this actually cost me, in UK money, £7. I don't know what that is in US dollars or euros. It's probably similar figure with the current exchange rate. And um, I bought several others. So I only spent about 40 UK pounds and I got about six dresses. Uh, and two of them worked out really well. So it was worth it for me. Like this is one of them. And I, have, I love wearing it, of course. It's, uh, you, know, like, you know, I love the shape of it. You know, it's, I love it. Anyway, okay, I'm, I'm digressing. So... Yeah, don't go mad with the money. Try a few things out first. Eventually, you could probably buy a more expensive wardrobe if you can afford it. I wouldn't 
recommend jeopardising your uh, financial position for your cross-dressing, which I know some people do. Uh, in fact, I nearly did that myself. So, you know, I'm talking from uh, hard-learned experience here. So watch the pennies uh, or the pounds or the dollars, wherever you live or the euros. <laughs> you know, be careful with your purchases, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, the other thing is try to be a bit tasteful in what you choose. You know, most um, first cross-dressers, and I can say this again from experience, will buy like micro short dresses and heels this big and almost fetish wear. What you're buying initially is your male fantasy of a female. <laughs> you know, it's over the top. Real women aren't like that. So if you seek a degree of realism, don't buy stuff like that. Try and exercise some taste. And try not to buy fashionable stuff. Just buy classic styles. Like, I think this dress is a classic sort of shape. You know, it's got long sleeves. Uh, long sleeves are also useful if you don't shave your arms, which I shave my arms. Uh, I'm getting around to that, actually. The other thing about if you want to look like a woman and... You know, there's varying degrees of commitment, which I find you go to over the years, is at some point, if you really want to look like a woman, you are going to have to shave off all your body hair. And also, if you want to get, um, how can I put this, hide your male genitals, because women don't have a bulge, um, they're quite flat down there, you are going to need to do what's known as tuck them away. And to do that, so I'm going to be quite graphic here, you basically push your testicles up into where they came from, so they're out of the way, which leaves just your penis, and you kind of pull that back. Make sure you're not excited, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, pull that back and tape it up between your bum. Um, and that can be painful, so I tend to use uh, medical tape like Micropore to keep it in position because it doesn't rip your skin off if you have to go to the toilet, which you are going to have to do. And um, Or you could get what's known as a gaff. Now, some people don't want to do the tuck and they push everything back between the legs and up into their uh, bum, or as we'd say in the UK, arse. You know, um, I don't know what you call it in America now. Fanny, is it, or something? In Britain, the fan is the front bit. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, but that's kind of like pushing your testicles between your legs, so they are getting crushed, whereas when you tuck them up, they're kind of comfortable. <laughs> that sounds bonkers, but until you've done it, you won't know. But it is comfortable. Um, so I can recommend it. I've gone, like, a whole day with them tucked, and um, it just means your dress is fit to... Uh, better. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll move on from that. Um, but shaving your legs is probably the most essential. And uh, although you can't tell on this dress, let me pull it, I have shaved my chest. So I've got no chest hair, no hair on my arms, no underarm hair. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I've shaved my eyebrows. I've, sh I've shaved all round my uh, bum. And I've shaved both legs and I've shaved my, uh, you know, my dukes. <laughs> They've been shaved. That's so that when I tuck them and tape up, I'm not having any issues with uh, screaming when I remove the tape. So, and plus the fact it's more comfortable. Um, and I have found over the years, I feel more comfortable and sleep better having no body hair. Um, but it's high maintenance, you know, minimum of once a week if you want to keep it away. So that then it comes the facial shave, uh, which can be pretty painful because you you're really shaving super close. I use a five blade um, Gillette razor. There there are alternatives, and I kind of shave once, then I shave against the growth, then I kind of really go over it. And the tough areas I've got around here. So, you know, your face can feel quite sore afterwards. But you've got to do it if you want your makeup to go on. Then going back to the makeup, if you've got a beard shadow, now my beard shadow is a bit like the classic Western film with the Mexican bandit. Uh, even if I've had a shave, there's this big black area, which hopefully you can't see at the moment. So what I've done there is I put MAC full coverage foundation over it, but you can still see it. But it does add a kind of base layer. Then I use red camouflage cream which I got from Cryolan, 
which is a theatrical makeup supplier. And I, I kind of, it looks ludicrous. I do the whole of my beard area and my neck in this bright red cryolan, but it does kind of neutralize the blue of your beard growth. And then I use MAC full coverage foundation, which goes over the top of it. And then at, once you've got that on, you can start doing your eyeshadow, eyebrows, eyeliner, mascara and your blusher and if you want to be like the Kardashians you can do all that OTT contouring which is not a good look I don't think <laughs> but that's just my view it's, you know it's not like a natural look I'm more into trying to look like a real woman but that's just what I want to do you might want to drag up and feel fabulous and I kind of quite admire that and I have done it and I will admit I loved it um, but you know I'm kind of more into wanting to feel like I'm a woman more and more. You know, I'm not going to transition into one. I'm a transvestite. Uh, but, you know, that's the focus at the moment. So, yeah, that leaves only the thing mentally. So I've taken a long time to get here. So if you're still with me, uh, well done. You know, <laughs> you know, I admire your um, tenacity for sticking with the video. Sorry, I've got an itch on my leg. Um, this is very stream of consciousness. So, you know, forgive me. Um, and I don't think I'm going to edit it. It's just going to be posted as it comes. So, uh, you know, if you're still with me, <laughs> well done. Um, yeah, mentally. Now, this is actually probably more important than the facade, which is the makeup and the clothes. You need to believe in your head you're not a man anymore. You're a woman, you know. That sounds easy, but it's not, it's really hard to do. And I struggle with it. In fact, I'm struggling with it right now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come across as being a woman, um, but I'm not. Um, I used to try and change my voice, but it was like ridiculous. I couldn't do it and it sounded mad. I was like, hey, I'm Melina. Welcome to my video. You know, I just sound like ridiculous. So I was actually advised by female friends that I don't have a particularly strong masculine voice anyway. and stick with it. In fact, I work with two women who've got deeper voices than I have, and I don't doubt their femininity at all. So, you know, here we go. I'm just using my voice. And I used to worry about movement and stuff, but, you know, I don't walk particularly masculine either. I'm, I'm lucky in that I'm not that masculine anyway. I'm not saying I'm super feminine because I'm not, but I'm not super masculine either. In fact, you know, some people call me a woos, but I don't mind that because I like being a girl. You know, so I'd rather not be too muscly and I'd rather retain a lower body weight and, you know, I'd rather favour my physique towards my desire to look female. Um, but going back to the mental thing, yeah, it's all about self-belief. You are a woman. Remember that film, Some Like It Hot, where he would say, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. That's basically it. <laughs> you have to convince yourself you're a girl. Um and it kind of affects everything about you. It changes how you feel and the way you move and your, your body movements become a bit more, you know, looser and you're a bit more fun and a bit more tactile. And, you know, like, hi, how are you? You know, like when blokes meet or guys, depending on where you're watching this video from, and they meet, it's like, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, whereas like when girls meet, it's like, hi, how are you? You know, and they're hugging each other. So women are definitely emotionally, you know, more free with it all and they're quite they don't mind showing their emotions whereas blokes it's all about you know poker faced and don't cry you know the first time i dressed up as a woman i totally trashed my mascara i was so happy and excited that i started crying you know and i'd never done that as a man i was thought what's going on what's going on but i think it was after years of uh you know wanting to do it um i should say i cross-dressed as a teenager then i was so horrified by it I went on a 20 year self suppression. I had a beard and everything. Like, I was not going to dress up as a woman. You know, who was I kidding? You know, it just got stronger and stronger. Eventually, the beard went and makeup was on and dress was on. And here, here was I appearing as a woman. And here I am today. So, um, but anyway, I think I've rambled and talked for so long. I think 20 minutes, according to my phone here, that. Um, I better shut up. And like I say, if you stuck with this, well done you. 
you know, you're a glutton for punishment. Uh, I hope there's something in there that you might find useful. And uh, if you've got any questions about it, I'm, I'm quite up for answering them in a shorter manner. I don't mind, you know, I won't do like I've just done on this video. So feel free to uh, email me. Um, I'll put the email in the uh, introduction, not below the video. Yeah. All right. I'll shut up. I'm going on. Okay. Have fun. Dress up like a woman if you want to and love it because I do. And I'm sure you will too. Bye.